This week on the Game Marks Podcast, we are playing Wrestling Revolution 3D to kick off the new year. How does this 2014 wrestling sim hold up today? We decide if we will play it forever Woo! or future endeavor. You're fired! Plus, Clash at the Feast and gaming news. Plug in and put on those nostalgia goggles because this week's Game Marks Podcast starts now. And now, the Game Marks! Hey, hi, hello, and welcome to the Game Marks Podcast. I am the man of a thousand and one nicknames, George Feast. And Happy New Year, I'm the man they call Johnny Clash, and today we are playing Wrestling Revolution 3D. And as always, we'd love to hear from you guys, so please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts and make sure to subscribe and rate this podcast wherever you choose to listen and always join in on the conversation on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Now, Johnny, a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, it is early Wednesday as we are recording this, so I unfortunately do not have a fun nickname uh, decided by the the, the wonderful people who are in our Twitch chat. Um, so how about you come up with one for me this week? I don't think you ever used Georgie Jigglebit, so let's go back to that. All right, so I am, this week, I will be Georgie Jigglebits. <laughs> I think that may, I think I preferred the New Year's baby over that. <laughs> All right, well... Speaking of, last week we played Super Wrestle Angels. I played it forever. You featured Endeavored. How are you feeling about that game? I mean, I still feel the same about that game, but that transition that you just did sent chills up my spine. I mean, yeah, uh, shut up, I hate this. All right, well, let's <laughs> let's quickly turn that around. Game Barry has ended. So we want to thank everyone who participated. This has been, I mean, we've only been doing this for two years. This has been our greatest success of Gamebury yet. And next year, oh, yeah. next year we're going to go bigger and better. I mean, here's, here's the, the dream. Um, every year that we do this, I'm going to get itchier and itchier for those tattoos. So, uh, you know, this year we got significantly closer to obtaining that goal, but... Uh, I mean, eventually, I want to get that tattoo. I definitely want to get that tattoo. But, George, we also have our Discord server, which is always popping with memes, some wrestling news, some consoles, stuff, everything you could imagine. We are popping all day, so check that out on our website at GameMarksPod.com slash Discord. And why don't you tell us who the first ever streamer spotlight is going to be? Oh. I'm so excited for this. So this is without a doubt one of the most active people in our Game Marks Pod universe. Insanely generous individual, insanely kind individual. Uh, for those of you who have already interacted with him, you know that he loves a good speed run. The streamer spotlight for the month of January is none other than the Elder Spork. What a guy. He's our favorite. Now, he informed me when I told him that this uh, this was going to be happening, that the later end of 2020 was not the best in terms of his streaming schedule, but... In 2021, he plans on picking it back up, and I have watched him. I know that Johnny has as well. He is one of the most entertaining streamers that is out there. He loves doing uh, speed runs of the classic Mario titles, uh, and he is damn good at it. So if yeah. you've never experienced someone running through Mario in minutes, like, I mean, actual minutes, it is it is unbelievable and, and quite a thrill to watch. And he actually said that his goal for 2021 is to have you and I go versus Ooh. in a speed run of the original Mario. And I said, if he is willing to uh, MC and host that event, then we will happily put it on. I actually so, used to speed run through the original Mario on VHS tape. Like, I'm talking like way before streams were even a thought. And I think my top was like eight and a half minutes. 
Wow. But it's been it's well, been a long time since VHS is so <laughs> Well make sure that you go to the Elder Sporks Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the Elder Spork. Um are, speaking okay, speaking of stream. I'm done with these interrogations. I, it's not our friends. Our friends are not doing this. Our friends would not do this to us. I don't believe it. We've interrogated the best of, you know, the Game Marks podcast community. It's not them. It's not It's not our friends. I'm surprised nothing happened last week. But we have to now keep our ears, keep our eyes open. This thing is infiltrating our Twitch. It's infiltrating our YouTube. It's infiltrating... So far, not our social media. We got, you know, we got extra protection over there. They haven't infiltrated our uh, Twitter account yet, thank God. But, George, we got we to gotta keep our eyes peeled here. Uh, yeah, I at this point, I just really want to get to the bottom of this. Uh, I was kind of hoping that we would have this solved by the end of the year and start 2021 off on a, on a good foot. Um, but you know what? Um, this... this this may, this may need to take some more drastic measures here, Johnny. I, I'm I'm approaching my limit dealing with this, and uh, I'm really starting to get pissed off. So I think uh, if I'm going to say by the middle or end of this month, if January does not come up with an answer, um, I'm I'm going to have one. So uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, um, it's like you said, it's pissing me off too. I am tired of this little shit stain. Let's clear our heads a little bit, and let's go to some gaming news. Are you looking to get a better grip on life? How about your video games? Well, VGF Gamers are the largest silicone gaming brand in the USA. They have a variety of different and unique skins for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One controllers and consoles. Check out their products at VGFGamers.com and use code GAMEMARKS to receive 15% off of your order at checkout. That's G-A-M-E-M-A-R-K-S at checkout. VGF Gamers. Better grip, better style. From now until the end of the year, U.S. Xbox players who donate their Microsoft rewards towards the effort to contain and stamp out COVID-19 will have their donations matched by Microsoft. Microsoft has allowed players to put their points towards the United Nations Foundation and global giving in their coronavirus response efforts since April. Free DLC is coming to Cyberpunk 2077 in early 2021. A couple of weeks back during an emergency meeting, CD Projekt Red President Adam Kaczynski said that it was too early to judge what would happen to the game's DLC and multiplayer mode, but added that it's ahead of us, so we don't know yet. We are now focused on improving Cyberpunk and will discuss it early next year. Now, however, a new page has been added to the game's website, and while it gives away very little about what might be in store for players, it does confirm that free DLC starts hitting Night City early 2021. And that's all the gaming news we have this week. Check back next week. So, Georgie, you actually joined me in one of my favorite games at Game Marks Mania, which was... Call of Duty Warzone, and we had Bear Bronson and his brother actually play with us. What do you think? You're going to be getting on a little more now. You're going to be, you're going to be uh, playing with yeah. the Clash. So, so, so here's the thing. Uh, I had a nickname a couple of weeks ago where, you know, my first shooter in a couple of months, probably about six to eight months, was on stream, and my shot wasn't once was uh, wasn't what it used to be. And uh, I, I got I got a little a little flack for that, but I think I redeemed myself during the uh, the Game Marks Mini live stream, and I would be happy to drop with you and, and friend of the show Bear Bronson and his brother whenever uh, whenever you you'd have me. Hey, you can buy anytime, okay? We, we're bound to do better than we did that night, so I'm sorry for everyone who watched. <laughs> well, what do you say now? We head over to our favorite segment, the question. Of the week. Ooh, yeah. Game Marks, uh huh. We are here to tell you that the Game Marks podcast is on Pro Wrestling Tees and T Public, uh huh. But the cream will always rise to the top. Now, there are two ways to shop 
ProWrestlingTees.com slash GameMarksPod or TeePublic.com slash user slash GameMarksPod because you know the Game Marks Podcast is the cream of the crap, huh? So head on over today and bow down to the kingdom of the madness. Your mustache is crooked, Marks. <laughs> So the question of the week is a weekly segment where we go back and forth and ask each other a question and then we like to propose the question to you and you let us know your answer on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Last week it was Johnny's question and he said, what was your favorite wrestler cameo in a movie? And there were a lot more than I thought. There is a lot. People, oh my God, so many of them. So, Mr. Bad Idea says Terry Funk and Over the Top. Now, this is a recurrent theme because Jade O'Malley says Terry Funk and Roadhouse. I see see a good Texas theme here because then 11 Rule 5 Draft says Stone Cold and Grown Ups 2. I don't remember that probably because I try to block the Grown Up series out of my head. And Eborg Knot says Hogan in Gremlins 2, which is also a good one. But George, this week, it is your turn to ask me the question. So, what do you got? All right. So, so talking last week, uh, my answer was uh, The Undertaker in Suburban Commando, where his voice is really high. And it got me <laughs> thinking about, about some other things from my childhood that, you know, but on the other side of the spectrum, not things that made me laugh and made me happy, but things that kind of creeped me out and were weird and scary. So, Johnny, my question this week for you and for everybody else listening is, when you were a kid, what was the scariest character in your opinion? Oh, man. Oh, man, I have to think about this. So, like, I mean, you could say, like, like Chucky or, you know, Jason or anything like that, but I'll give you my answer right off the bat because... This was the only answer that I could think of. Um, I don't know if you ever watched Courage the Cowardly Dog on Cartoon Network back in the day. Of course. Uh, do you remember that guy with the big creepy grin who would say, Naughty. Yes. He kind of looks a little Beetlejuice. Freaky Fred. Freaky Fred Freaky from Fred. Courage the Cowardly Dog scared the shit out of me as a kid i don't i loved that show i couldn't watch that episode okay i think i know who mine is i'm gonna go two actually from the same series so i'm gonna go with hey arnold here do you remember the haunted train episode oh yeah 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 Yeah. i thought you were gonna say uh uh pigeon man Oh God! Oh yeah. Well, that's that's like a given. But no, I'm going with Arnold. Arnold had some like scary moments. There were some ghosts in like his bedroom and stuff. But this guy on the train was freaky. And then there was the Rat King in the sewer that stole his uh, clock. Oh yeah. Hey Arnold was. Yeah, uh... you know what? Now that, now that <laughs> yeah. you mention it, there are a lot of weird things in Hey Arnold. There's like a headless cabbie in one episode. Hey Arnold was weird. Really weird show. They would, like, show their butts when they, like, mooned each other, and there was a stoop kid. I don't know. Weird. Very weird show. I'm going to go with that. he had the that. coolest room for a kid. The coolest like, room. Coolest, like, did he build all coolest that? Coolest bedroom ever. Did he get, like, a settlement in his parents' death or something? I don't know. I <laughs> have no idea. It's just, like, like how many kids, like, had, like, a rooftop loft with a giant skylight? and Crazy. Unreal. Unreal. But anyway, as usual, we now throw it to you. The fans tell us. Who the scariest character from your childhood was. But George, we didn't want to do this plunge. We did this plunge. We are here now. We promised that we would play this game, and we played it. Are you ready to take a deep dive into Wrestling Revolution 3D? I'm not, but let's do it. What's up, Game Marks Podcast? This is Danny Tancredi, and I'm here with my brother Johnny Tancredi. And together, we are the Cult Looking Podcast. Each week, we bring to you the latest news and reviews on all things baseball collectibles. From baseball cards and memorabilia to bobbleheads and stadium giveaways, each episode will discuss the newest products to hit the shelves of your local card store and your favorite ballparks around the country. Be sure to be following us on Instagram at the Caught Looking Podcast 
and on Twitter at QuoteLookingBB. New episodes drop every Friday, so be sure to tune in wherever great podcasts like this one are available. The Quote Looking Podcast. Don't get caught looking, start collecting. All right, so Wrestling Revolution 3D released October 1st in the way, way back before times of 2014. Seems forever ago. It does. Released on the PC, Android, and iOS, developed and published by M. Dickey. Now, this is the sequel to the original Wrestling Revolution, and this has one big shared Wrestling Revolution universe and combines and enhances some features from the first game, which is, you know, what you want to see for a, a, a sequel, you know, building upon the original, increasing uh, some features and If this is enhanced, I can't stuff. wait to play the first one. Oh, my God. Uh, if you didn't say it. I was gonna. Now, I really don't even know where to start with this game. I, I... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's start with saying that this game isn't just a wrestling game. It's actually also technically like a GM mode as well, where you could do kind of like last week's game, wrestling Super Wrestle Angels, where you could kind of take the reins of a promotion or a couple of promotions. In this game's matter, but. You could also play through as like a story mode as well. Yeah, and now you look at this game, and in the still JPEG images that you'll see on your phone in the App Store on Steam, um, the game doesn't look half bad. And and to be honest with you, when you're playing it, the game still doesn't look that bad. The crowd is probably the worst looking thing in the entire game, but. Uh, Many of the M. Dickey series of games are notorious for uh, the the clunky controls, and I, I guess this would you even say it's polygon? Everything kind Oof. of looked like a sausage. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to put it. Everything looked like a sausage. I think there were some like Nintendo sixty four games that looked better than this one. But yeah, that's kind of the direction that they go for here. Like this game isn't meant to be like a like a competitor to like 2K. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's very true. And actually, a matter of fact, like the popularity of these games are because they're so low budget. And he's actually M. Dickey himself has described himself as being single handedly responsible for the worst games ever to be enjoyed by millions of people. And you know what? I guess if that's a that's the title that you're going to roll with, and that's the, you know, that's that's how you want to champion things. Well, you will make these <laughs> low budget games that have these weird cult followings. But uh, but with that comes some criticism as well, because in July of 2018, Dickey announced his retirement for the second time from full time game development, citing frightening intolerance from digital retailers, among other reasons. And in an interview. He also cited increasing demands from players after the release of Action Arcade Wrestling titles and WWE 2K19, but he stated he did not wish to compete directly with WWE games, but intended to provide a cheaper, lighter, and more creative alternative that's always going to be made by one man or a smaller team. And to be honest, that's what we like to see. Like, that's why we love the action arcade wrestling games. That's why we love what Mike Herman's putting out next month. We like that. And and you know what? You're absolutely right um, that it's a double-edged sword because we can, you know, who knows how the end of this episode is going to go. But if you read some of the Steam reviews for this game, um, there's both ends. Um, you You have people who absolutely love the game and treat it like it's... You know, it's their number one. And then there are other reviews that are like, I can't believe that this game came <laughs> out in, you know, and it's competing with all these other titles and is, you know, some people's on their top lists of video games, which to me is, I don't know, like you're entitled to like what you like. Like who's to, who's to tell you that you're wrong? 
Like that's true. If, if you have a blast playing this game, like that's I feel like that's another thing that people get wrong about this podcast a lot is that like we are an authority in gaming reviews. We are not the authority because everyone's views and opinions and feelings on video games are just that opinions. They're yours. You could play this game for hours on your phone and you might not even touch like a 2K game or say even like go back and play a No Mercy. Maybe you're going through that stretch where you're just going to play this. Maybe you're addicted to like the booking mode. I mean, I kind of was intrigued by that as well. Yeah, there's something for everyone, and this game just might be it. I don't know. Yeah, but you want to hop in and break down some of these game modes we got? Yes. So, when you go to the main menu, the first thing you're going to see is play. And when you click on play, first of all, let's talk about this menu. It's yeah this <laughs> this menu. It starts off like okay, <clears throat> I think, but as you get deeper in, like the fonts start to change. You got like a Comic Sans here with like a grungy font here. It's as designers, I think we both kind of like pulled our hair out seeing just the aesthetics here. But again, a low budget game. We got to keep reminding ourselves that. So when you go into the menu and you hit play, the first thing you're going to see is training. You're going to need this just like every other game you're not familiar with. Take the training if you're going to play this game. It'll help you big. We did not do this. We got screwed by this. We went back and we oh, did yeah. it. And we figured some things out that we did not know before. But now when you go to shows, you have the Revolution Begins, which you could select different types of shows that you want to run. There's actually war games in this, which is pretty damn cool. They were able to make two rings side by side and do a war games match. We're going to get into the customization later. You can do a Japan tour, a USA tour, six sides of steel, UFC type gruesome fight, a UK tour, a satire series, and a Mexico tour. Now, in the exhibition mode, this is what we were talking about. Ah, the return. You can call it cast, but to us, it's just player select, and you could select a player from tons of different promotions. Uh, We're going to go through that roster later because they are all parodies of actual wrestlers. Not going to lie, some of them do look pretty damn cool. But the coolest... Oh, absolutely. The coolest feature here of the exhibition mode... I'm sorry, exhibition mode... I was, you, I was like, what podcast is this? <laughs> you could we make... an exhibitions? You could make matches that mean nothing, mean something, because there's a script that you could put. You could make a heel turn, a face turn. It could be someone's retirement match. And you do all this just by selecting the script, and once you run the game, it happens. Now, the arena is also fully customizable. Me and George, we made a six-sided ring in a nice 100% capacity arena, which a six-sided ring hasn't seen in a while. And you could also <laughs> you could also customize the rules. So this part is really cool in the game. But then the bell rings. Yeah, so so here's, here's the part that... Um kind of threw me for a loop. I've never played a game where you can actively take control of any participant in the match at any time. If you <laughs> in the middle of your match decided that you wanted to be the ref, uh it's and it's it's a very easy thing to do. You hit one button and guess what? Now you're playing as the ref. Uh someone happens to run in on your match or what happened in our clash at the feast, two people run in. Um you can take control of the people on the outside of the ring, which I get in certain scenarios could be cool you're getting beat up in the ring you want to you know flip the script and kind of uh you know get one over on your opponent sure take take control of the person the that ran outside yeah take control of the person that ran in on your match and now you're you got a fresh new character to beat up uh but it it just could you imagine doing that in like revolution no or in 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 uh in revenge no. Like you're playing NWO <laughs> Revenge and all of a sudden like You're now the rest. DDP runs out and you hit Z and now you're in control of DDP. Yeah, pretty unfair. But I want to point out the entrances because they were a lot like Legends of Wrestling, that series where you control your character throughout the entire entrance. So from the second you come out of the curtain, you have to make them walk, make them taunt. You could make them walk up the guardrail if you want. You can make them pick up a weapon and wait for their opponent in the ring with that weapon. Um, you know what other game series does that as well? Fire Pro. That's true. Yep. So do you want to get into this gigantic roster? How do we break this down? Yeah, so 
there's a lot of people here, so maybe we'll break it down by uh, by faction. Okay. So if you want, I will start us off this week. Okay. Are you going to read the fake name and then who they portray? Yes, I will do both. Oh, boy. Okay. This, this, right. this is going to take a while. So you have All American Wrestling, which is the WWE. You have Lance Monaco, who is Vince McMahon. Jimmy Sierra, who is John Cena. Les Miserables, which is The Miz. <laughs> Night Shift, who is The Undertaker. Trojan Force is Roman Reigns. Brad White is Bray Wyatt. Fanny Monaco is Stephanie McMahon. Rory Awesome is Randy Orton. Hardback is Ryback. Mike Shawshot is Shawn Michaels. Ronan Raw is Seth Rollins. Harry... Harry Harass? Yeah, I guess. Harry Harass is Luke Harper. Ripper Ace is Triple H. Ralph Zipper is Dolph Ziggler. Slow Mo is Big Show. Dragon Ryan is Daniel Bryan. Amber Lance. Whoa, Black Betty. Amber Lance is Dean Ambrose. Robin Nest <laughs> is Eric Rowan. Mr. Benjamins is Ted DiBiase. Hands, H A N Z. Hands Cuffs is Big Boss Man. Splinter is Mankind. General Genocide is Sergeant oh my Slaughter. God. Mustard Gas is Colonel Mustafa. Brother Sucka, which is Johnny Clash's new adult film name, oh. is Booker T. Geek Chic is AJ Lee. Jesse Bell is Nikki Bella. Jigsaw Jeremy <laughs> is Jim Duggan. Cabal is Kane. Tom Stone is Paul Bearer. Roadhog from Overwatch is Road Dog. Stu Stunner is Billy Gunn. Majesty is Jerry Lawler. Bobby Q. I get it. <laughs> oh my God. I get it. I get it. Is Jim Ross. And Sean Monaco is Shane McMahon. All right. And I'll take over United Kingdom Wrestling, which is total nonstop action, which is very weird how they set this up because there are not only TNA wrestlers in here. We have Hustle Hayes as Paul Heyman. Vert- Vulture is Raven. Jerry Buckler is Jeff Jarrett. Meg Knight is Paige. Wayne Barrage is Bad News Barrett. Anton Apex is Austin Aries. Agent Kyle is AJ Styles. Bloody Lee is Bully Ray. Buddy Brew is Bobby Roode. Gravita- Gravitas? Gravitas is Neville. Shane Gravitas. Gravitas is Neville. I like Gravitas better. <laughs> Shane Asterix is Seamus. Abysmal is Abyss. Angel Dust is Christopher Daniels. Blood Brother is Brother Devon. Ethan McLeod is James Storm. Dominator is Rob Van Dam. Mac Donald is Drew McIntyre. Judgment Dave is Sid Justice. <laughs> I like that one. Monty Python is Jake Roberts. Demento is Sabu. Tony Screamer is Tommy Dreamer. Jake Obscene is Just Incredible. Dean Cutlass is Shane Douglas. Mother Forker is Abdullah the Butcher. Oh. Primetime is MVP. Brutus Lang is Brodus Clay. Ryan Hero is Rhino. Ghetto Child is Taz. Ghetto Child! Bang Bang <laughs> is Mick Foley slash Cactus Jack. Becky Lane is Mickey James. And Silk Siren is Velvet Sky. All have right. fun with this next one. Yeah, well, I hope you have fun with the one after that. So, next is Rising Sun Puro Resu, which is pro wrestling, I'm assuming. Sure. You have Machine Miyuri, which, who is Mitsuhara Misawa, Rain Maker, spelled R-E-I-G-N, is Kazusuka Okada, Tower Misawa is Giant Baba, Tan Heihachi is Hiroshi Tanahashi, Killer Karado is Toshiaki Kawada. Snake Suzuki is Great Sasuke. Butter Monk is Ricky Choshu. Ultra Bull is Vader. Nico Moron is Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> Bash Nagata is Kenta Kobashi. Mutox is The Great Muda. Hai Yakuza is Hayabusa. Sam Handsome is Stan Hansen. Ain't wrong. Bobby Southside is Terry Funk. Sumorai 
is Yokozuna. Chang Mainami is Hideo Itami. Tenryu Mist is Takamichi Noku. Eugene Yamato is Yuji Nagata. Prince David is Finn Balor. And Motorola Chan is Red Shoes. All right, now we're going to Super Super Lucha Libre, which is AAA, CMLL, and WCW. We have Dirk Switchoff, who is Eric Bischoff. Venom, who's Surfer Sting. Joel Hardon, which is <laughs> Jeff Hardy. <laughs> Emil Tequila, who's Conan. Machismo, who's Razor Ramon. Esa Carrero, who's Eddie Guerrero. Red Eagle, Road Warrior Hawk. Hack Soar, who is Axe. Miles Hardon, who is Matt Hardy. King Bombard, who's Rey Mysterio. Heavy Snatch, who's Kevin Nash and Diesel. Oh, God. Pedro De Niro is Alberto El Patron. Red Gator is Road Warrior Animal. Mascara is Sin Cara. Lola is Lita. Jordan Hangtime is Billy Kidman. That's, yeah, that's, uh, yeah. Helix is X-Pac. That's actually not a bad name. Helix is X-Pac. Voodoo is Papa Shango. Super Safari is Jimmy Snuka. Zulu is Kamala. Crash Cougar is Headbanger Thrash. Glitter Artie is Goldust. Dream Hornet is Ultimo Dragon. L... Giantina is Giant Gonzalez. Sam Mower is Rikishi. Falsehood is R Truth. Listat Macabri is Gangrel. Lost Boy is Vampiro. Hard Gainer is La Parca. Joey Morrison is John Morrison. Cameron Cool is Kofi Kingston. And Gran Bishma, <laughs> shout out to Bobby Orlando, is the great <laughs> Kali. This is the longest roster ever. That's my favorite bish, Bobby Orlando. Finish us off. All right. Next, we have Hollywood. We have Hank Slogan. It's Hulk Hogan. Scarecrow, who is Sting. Lee Zhao Long, who is Bruce Lee. Slam Dunk is CM Punk. Blockbuster is The Rock. God of War is the Ultimate Warrior. Libby Raider is China. <laughs> Beast Eater is Batista. Jay and Rico is Chris Jericho. Redneck Ro- Rostein. Redneck Rostein. Yeah, Red. Yeah, Papa uh, uh, Rostein Weiser. Uh, is Stone Cold Steve Austin. Matt Showman is Macho Man Randy Savage. Mac Bison is Mike Tyson. Yogi Beard is Diamond Dallas Page and Hollywood Hank is Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Whew. Easy for us that's to a, say. We, if you skip through that, mouthful. we don't blame you. That's a mouthful. I'm not going to lie. Is. All right, so now let's talk about the character models and the art style of this game. We briefly touched on it, how everything's customizable. Polygon might not be the right word. 3D is definitely a word used, but is it the right word? I guess. It almost feels like a smoother looking war zone. Yes. Kind of. Like, like it almost looks like if war zone and if the acclaimed and the THQ series had a baby, this is it. I see that. I also see where you said that everyone looks like sausages, except the crowd, who's clearly cut out from the wrapper of the sausage, because they are just complete paper. (laughs) They're the casing of the sausage. They are complete paper. Yeah, I mean, and I gotta say, there's so many options in this game. So you can have cage match, you can fight in an octagon, you can have a six-sided ring, you can have two rings, you can have... First blood matches, submission matches, uh, TKO matches. 19 men in the uh, ring at one time. 19 men in the ring at the same time. Good luck to your telephone if you're playing this on your phone. Um, it it really does have a lot of features for, for you know, it actually being a mobile game. Like, there there is a lot to it, which... I guess I wasn't expecting at all. And that's actually something that M. Dickey said, which is that he sacrificed having like a perfect looking game or even a good looking game to put in all the features that people want. And that's that's the sign of a good developer is listening. You know, we, we talked about it how many times with 2K20. Like you want you want a company that's going to listen to the audience and be like, hey, you want these features. I will be happy to give you these features. Well, 
here here is M. Dickey giving people exactly what they want. Right, and it has that kind of fire pro y aspect to it where like just everyone's in here under different names, but every you heard the roster we just read, it's literally everyone from the time. It's it's an unbelievable roster. Alright, so we've talked about the art style of the game, but let's talk about the actual presentation of the artwork, because I mean it's a you can't can't say it doesn't read like a wrestling game it's on a wrestling ring yeah and by artwork there's no game case obviously because this is only on steam and mobile devices but you get a wrestling ring with wrestling revolution 3d and i'm gonna be honest here though i've never actually played this game i believe like three phones i've had in a row i've installed this game kind of opened it and just never touched it so this was really my first actual playthrough of this game yeah this was uh you know no uh no lying on my end here. I have never played this game. Uh it's been in my Steam cart for no less than two years. It um, took us some I convincing finally, to actually play it. Finally pulled the trigger. We've had uh, a couple of people in the Twitch chat and people on Twitter recommend that we play this game. So we figured we would give it a shot, start off the new year with a brand new series. And uh yeah, so this this artwork here is just a picture of the crowd, the ring, and then the logo plastered on the ring. Uh, if I'm being a stickler, the perspective on the 3D is not the right alignment for it to be like, like it's not aligned correctly on the ring apron. But that's yeah, just that's me being, being a stickler. A stickler. It's not that bad. Uh, of, but other than that, you know what our favorite feature was? Now that I look at this ring that we didn't mention. You could actually change the material of like around the ring and you could actually make it, you can make it concrete if you want, which is another form of cement, which is, which is dried cement, which is what we (laughs) did most of our matches in. (laughs) We we were what? Most of our, what are you saying? No, 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 no. The material in, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. oh, I was going to say, that's not that kind of podcast. I don't know about you. Yeah, about you but. We're not that kind of podcast, John. But let's let's check out the description here. Usually we read the back of the game box, but we don't have that. So let's read the description that's in Steam right now. So, the biggest wrestling sim on mobiles is even bigger on your desktop. Over 300 cal- calories. Oh, my God. <laughs> Over 300 characters spread across nine different promotions and as many of them in the ring as you can handle. See, I was trying to get a cookie before, but I was like wondering how many calories I burned. Oh, I'm not wearing my uh, 300 today. calories. Damn. Um, different arenas and ring shapes, including two rings side by side for the first ever playable war games. Unique animation system allows any move to transition into any other move at any moment for chain wrestling, which we saw because. I jumped off the ropes with like an acai moonsault and George just transitioned into a stunner or something. Enjoy the action from dozens of different camera angles, which <laughs> I, I suggest not messing with those. Game- dozens. Literal dozens. Gaming's most detailed simulation of life as a wrestler from contract negotiations to an endless calendar of matches. The industry's most playable management Sim, where you must act out entertaining matches for ratings. Mix and match dozens of different rules to create your own matches. Interactive tutorial makes wrestling easy to play but difficult to master. We agree. Fully playable by controller, which allows for multiplayer action on a shared screen. Files are available to be replaced or expanded upon to make the world yours. And that's kind of cool that they say that. You could do that. Yeah, uh, this was, you know... This was one of the rare cases where they sold you exactly what they gave you. This wasn't a situation where they, you know, over-promised and under-delivered. This was, they made the game, they described the game, and that's the game that you got. There was, you, you didn't, you didn't want anything. You weren't like, oh, this feature doesn't work, or this feature. Like, what M. Dickey gave you is what M. Dickey promised you, and... That's it. You're getting that's that's a sign of a good developer. Yeah, uh, but uh, George, did you know? Did you know Wrestling Revolution 3D reached 50 million downloads, becoming the first sports game on Google Play to do so? 
Did you know in 2019, MD Geek confirmed that a new wrestling project was in development for the Nintendo Switch and mobile devices titled Wrestling Empire, which is set to release early 2021. Did you know updates for this game are still rolling out with the newest coming to the app stores in the next few weeks? All right, Johnny, but I think it's time for us to hop over and talk about some ratings and reviews. All right. Larnar. All right, so this is actually a little easier that it's on Steam and iOS and Android because you get like the actual ratings as they happen. They're still going. So on Steam, all reviews are very positive with 283 very positive reviews. And the recent reviews, there's actually been 12 very positive. So I see you didn't actually do your purchase yet. You didn't review your purchase yet. No, 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 no. Okay, got it. Now, the iOS, it's a 3.9 out of 5, and that's out of 3.2 thousand ratings. And on the Android, we are over a million ratings with a 4 out of 5 stars. But, George, with all that, it's time for the most important rating of them all. Because right now, it's time to rate the games. The game! Johnny Clash. Wrestling Revolution 3D. Will you play it forever? Woo! Or future endeavor? You're fired! So I think... I, di- I didn't know how to feel about this going in. I kind of assumed it was a shit show, and it was a shit show. <laughs> I think it's meant to be a shit show. But all in all, I we have to say once again, like... Playing it with you was fun because of the flubs and, like, what the hell is going on? To play it more and, like, play it by myself? No. So I'm going to future endeavor this game. You're fired! And what about you? Uh, yeah, so I think I might do another rare rating here. Um, <laughs> Come on. I am, I am going to do a split rating. I am going to uh, play it forever on uh, iOS and Android. And I am going to future endeavor it on Steam because I just feel like this game is not meant for computers. But I could imagine sitting on a train need to kill some time and like popping open this game and 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 you know making the ride a little quicker. Okay, so so it's a it's a play forever. You have to pick one of the other. <sighs> Fine, yeah, it's a play forever then. Woo! All right, cool. I didn't I didn't expect that out of you. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie. It's one of those uh those car crash games that's kind of fun to play. It is. But speaking of our playthrough, let's talk about Clash at the Feast. Alright, Clash at the Feast, our weekly tournament. Uh, where John and I go head to head in that week's game. Currently, we made a different, little bit of a different stipulation this week for the the game. Where uh, if the game went over a certain length of time, we decided that we would not do the best two out of three, um, and we set the time limit to one hour. And if the match went longer than ten minutes, uh, then we weren't gonna. Two, two out of three, and <laughs> thank God we we almost ran out of time in our match because we went over thirty minutes. I think like almost forty five minutes in our match. Yeah, that was that was a little nuts. Uh, yeah, uh, check it out on our YouTube channel because while we make it sound like it was the worst thing in the world for it to be that long, it was full of entertainment. Oh yeah, absolutely. So in our match, in our match, I was uh, Prince David who is uh, Finn Balor, and Johnny Clash was Tenryu Mist, who was Taka Michinoku. And we had had a a run-in by Motorola Chan, and I can't remember who the other person was that ran in. Meanwhile, the ref was the Great Muda. Yeah, that is also another very important detail. And this was a banger, back and forth, barn burner, 
Uh, absolutely. The crowd was on their feet going crazy. Uh, five star in the Japanese six sided ring Tokyo Dome. And, uh, yeah, the, the, this week, your boy, you're reigning, uh, defending uh, Clash uh, at the Feast champion, starting off the new year with a dub. Mr. George Feast. Play my music. All right, you took the first one of the new year. Doesn't mean you're going to take the last one of the year. I still got plenty of time to catch up. But George, speaking of... Next week, what's it going to be? What are we playing? All right. So next week, I decided that we are going to bring it back to the mainstream wrestling titles. Thank God. Because next week, we are playing WWF Rage in the Cage. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. One of those glorious Sega CD titles. Nice, okay. I don't think I ever put too much time into this game, so I'm excited to play through. Uh, it's essentially a Royal Rumble, but everything's a cage match. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's what I've seen. It's, it's Royal Rumble, <laughs> bro. Everything's a cage match. Very excited. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, okay. All right, well, is this, uh, is this it? Are we, are we putting a bow on it, Johnny Boy? I think I'm ready to put this game away forever, so take us home. All right. Yep, I already got the refund. All right, well, that's going to do it for us this week on the Game Marks Podcast. Please check out our Pro Wrestling Tees store at prowrestlingtees.com slash Pod. It is the best way besides listening to support the podcast. Be sure to follow us on all forms of social media at Game Marks Pod. Leave us a review and a rating on Apple Podcasts and subscribe to wherever great podcasts can be found. Happy New Year, guys. 2021 going to be a great great year very excited for uh everything that we got going on new year same old ending wear your mask wash your hands social distance be safe we love you johnny clash say goodbye game over marks Marks podcast, put them on the radar. Playing rare games, second Saturday, no game shard. Johnny and George work hard and they play hard. Future endeavor games and put them in the graveyard. From the deep dive to the clash at the feast. How can I get more? That's question of the week. Follow on Twitch, there's nothing that they won't play. Game Marks podcast every single Monday.